Roll the camera. Okay. 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 I'm Laura Barch and I'm Amber Kruger. Today on EWS News we have a special bulletin for you on famous New Zealand natural disasters that have occurred due to the weather. We will be examining the Waihine disaster, the Taniwai rail disaster and the famous Wellington flood disaster. So first up let's talk about the Wellington flood. On the night of December 19th, 1976, heavy rain fell on Wellington and the Hutt Valley. Rivers and streams overflowed. Their banks, stormwater drains flooded and slips were brought down. Wellington and the Hutt Valley don't normally get floods and this was said to be Wellington's worst flood ever. Experts agree that it is unlikely for rain to fall again in such heavy amounts over the Wellington region for at least another 500 years. Sadly, a three and a half year old boy from Lower Hutt named Danny Fort died in the flood. The emergency services of the city were extremely busy. Policemen and ambulance drivers worked over many hours trying to help the flooded city. In the end, the Wellington flood caused over $30 million worth of damage, making it historically New Zealand's most expensive flood. Here's our on the spot reporter, Amy Bymer with Wellington Flood disaster survivors Brooke Love and Crystal Marriott. Hello, I'm Amy Bymer and here we have two survivors from the Wellington Flood here with us today to recount their horrific experiences. Hi Brooke and Crystal and thanks for joining us today. What thoughts did you have when you saw all of the flooding? Well, my family and I were scared as all the water went flooding past our ankles. I thought it was going to be the end of the world. Was your family okay? Yes, but I think the young ones were shocked at our house and all of the damage the flood did to it. Crystal, were all your friends okay? Yes, they were all okay, but none of them had their house, houses left standing. They were pretty devastated. Some of them moved away from Wellington and never returned. What did you do immediately after the flood? Did you think about leaving too? Well, we decided to rebuild our home and start our lives over again. Hopefully Wellington will never experience a flood like that again. So, I don't think I could live through it a second time. Thanks ladies, and that's all from me. Now back to you Amber in the studio. An interesting interview. Thanks Amy. And now for our Next extreme weather story. On April 10, 1968, just after 6.40 a.m., an inter-islander ferry called the Waihine was hit by two violent storms while entering the Wellington Harbour. These storms merged all over Wellington City, creating an extra-tropical cyclone called Giselle. Giselle was the worst cyclone recorded in New Zealand history. Due to the storm, the Waihine hit Barrett's Reef, took on water and then started to sink. The Waihine disaster directly affected the crew and the 610 passengers on board. Once the Waihine struck the, red, the reef, the captain decided that everyone needed to abandon ship. 51 people lost their lives in the angry Black Seas and two died later due to their substantial injuries. Many survivors who made it to shore were given warm drinks and were wrapped in blankets before they were taken to the railway station to be reunited with their relatives. Now over to our reporter Brittany Pitcher. Thanks Amber. I'm Brittany and joining me now are sisters Kate and Darcy Gibbon, survivors from the Waihini disaster. So how did you feel the night before the Waihini sank Kate? Well, the night the Waihini sailed from Lisherton was very dark and spooky and there was a feeling of impeding danger in the air. I can remember that very clearly. I even joked about hoping the ship didn't sink. Little did I know what lay ahead. When the Waihini hit Batsy, what were you doing, Darcy? The next morning, I awoke to find we're in the, middle of, we're in the midst of a terrible storm and the ship was rolling badly. Then there was a distinct thud at one stage when the ship must have hit Barrett's Reef. I, the impact threw me across the cabin. I had been cleaning my teeth at the time. 
I suddenly felt very afraid and didn't know what to do. A steward came rushing into the cabin and told me to put my life jacket on and proceed slowly up to the lounge on B deck. All I could see was sea spray. Well, it must have been a rough trip for the turbu. How did you get off the Waiheni, Kate? Yes, it was a life-changing moment for the both of us, but the crew were very caring. For some reason, I ended up on the left side of the ship instead of the right side, where we were meant to be to get on the lifeboats. I came across a man from Fiji, who was also on the port side, I presume helping to get people off the ship. I quickly told him I was lost and could he help me get off. He told me to be very careful and follow him. I can remember climbing around the outside rail of the deck and he jumped in the seat and I followed him. Luckily he was there to grab me. Well thanks for sharing your story Kate and Darcy. Back to you Laura and Amber. Thanks Brittany. And now for something completely different. At 10.21pm on Christmas Eve 1953, the Wellington to Auckland Night Express had a terrible accident when it plunged into the flooded Whangaroo River due to a broken rail bridge. Most of the passengers were heading home for Christmas and had bought presents for their families and friends. This tragic event is now famously known in New Zealand as the Tangiwai Railway Disaster. The cause of this tragedy was a break in the rock of Mount Rupaihu's crater lake, which sent a huge wave of water, silt, boulders and debris surging down the Whangaru River minutes before the express approached the Tangiwai Bridge. Out of 285 passengers, 151 people were killed. Most of them drowned in the oil-filled waters below. The train had been travelling at a speed between 64 to 80 kilometres per hour. Cyril Elise, a postman, was the first to witness the broken bridge and he tried to warn the conductor. Unfortunately, the conductor did not see his warning and the train came to an end. The Wellington to Auckland Express train line no longer runs due to this tragic accident. Let's cross to our on-the-spot reporter who has more on the situation. Over to you, Jeanette. Thanks, Laura. I'm Jeanette Yu, and joining me now is Sarah Ellens, a rescuer and hero during the Tangiwai Railway disaster. Cyril, what did you do when you saw the train heading for the damaged railway bridge and flooded river? I immediately looked for something to warn the passengers on board. I found that my flashlight still had batteries in it, so I flashed it towards the engine. How did you feel when you realized that the engine driver saw you? Yeah, I was relieved that he saw me, but unfortunately it was too late. The train was moving too fast for it to stop. I. I watched in horror as the train plunged off the side of the bridge and into the flooded river. And as I and as I watched, I saw that people were piling out of the doors to to try to save their loved ones. Incredible. Then what did you do? Well, I looked around to find people who could help me find survivors and I and I felt honored knowing that my help meant that some lives were saved. Cyril, at that point did you feel like a hero? Well, I was just glad that I helped and that I saved some people's lives. Well thank you Cyril for your heroic recount on being of being involved in the Tangiwai Railway disaster rescue effort. Now over to Christy in Geneva in a, with a look back in time at the horrible weather forecast from the morning the Wahine disaster occurred. Thank you, Jeanette. Ki- <laughs> 
Cyclone Gazelle was first reported on the 5th of April 1968 when it hit French Caledonia with storm warnings issued throughout New Zealand. The next day, early on the 10th of April, Cyclone Gazelle hit Cape Ranger. Cape Ranger. Winds of up to 160 kilometres an hour caused massive damage to buildings. Torrential rain flooded farmland and Northland, drowning hundreds of farm animals. A farmer was also killed when he was blown off a haystack. The cyclone's pattern of damage continued as it travelled across the North Island but turned south down the east coast. Ships were driven ashore and landslips closed roads. Rain caused massive flooding and wind left roofs torn off and windows broken. By the time Cyclone Gazelle hit Wellington on the morning of the 10th of April, another storm had driven at the west coast of the South Island from Antarctica. The two storms mo- met over the capital causing huge damage winds in Wellington were the strongest ever recorded at one point reaching speeds of 275 kilometres an hour. As the storm moved onto the South Island, hundreds of Christchurch houses lost their roofs and both and both the Avon and the Head Heathcote rivers flooded throughout Cranterbury over fi- over 500 hectares of forests were destroyed in Southland. The flooding was the worst since 1913. Some people were stranded on the roofs of their houses and had been and had to be rescued by a jet boat. Cyclone Gazelle finally blew out somewhere in the Southern Ocean. That's all from us for now. Good night, New Zealand. Catch you tomorrow. Back to the news desk with Laura and Amber. It's Christine and Geneva. We hope you have enjoyed this evening's programme on some of New Zealand's most horrifying natural disasters that have occurred due to the weather. That's all from us here at Extreme Weather Stories. Thank you all for watching and we'll see you again next time. Goodbye. Goodbye. Enohora. Ladies and gentlemen. Roll the camera. Okay. okay. okay.